Welcome survivors, this is GP bringing you the latest ARK news. And today we finally get to see how the newest creature of ARK, the Rhyneognathor, is going to look in terms of some of its abilities and taming methods. And it comes with a brand new resource as well, which is always good to see. The latest crunch revealed the dossier, and don't forget this creature is coming to Ark Survival Evolved in June to mark the game's 8th anniversary, and then of course arriving later in the year with Survival Ascended. Now the devs did take some of the abilities suggested in the original creature suggestion, including the taming method, which honestly surprised me, but of course they didn't take everything, and it's certainly not the Sky Giga it was originally described to be, but it's definitely big enough for a bug. Let's take a look at the wild aspect of the creature. So some of this was definitely in the original creature suggestion. I couldn't find that one anymore, so I couldn't compare it with this, but I'm pretty sure it was described as being able to skate or skim across the water, which of course this one can. There's nothing to suggest at this point that it can actually go into the water though. So we'll have to wait to find out whether that is the case. So this creature is described as producing a quick hardening resin. Possibly a new resource that's going to be available maybe. So far this only describes it as being used by the Rhyneognathor. But I'm curious to see if it's a resource that you can take away from the creature. If it's something that it can produce and use elsewhere. But it does have another resource that we will come on to shortly. So with this resin, the Rhyneognathor can harden its shell to provide it more defense and therefore taking less damage from incoming projectiles and attacks. Meaning to kill this creature, it could be more of a headshot requirement or possibly underbelly, depending on how much of the creature is covered by its shell. So it sounds like this creature could potentially be used to soak up bullets. Spray hard bullet like globs. So essentially a creature that has its own ammunition, similar in a way to the Velenosaur that fires quills from its body, most likely using stamina as it goes. And squirting softer globs that harden on impact, presumably an attack that is designed to slow down or possibly even paralyze survivors and creatures for short periods of time. Only time will tell as to how easy or difficult this creature will be to fight in the wild. But if I'm being honest here, it is sounding like it could be a pretty big pain to deal with. And we still don't know what type of environment to find this creature in. Although I suspect more swampy areas may be the place. It's just, to me, it's gonna, I don't know, it might feel a bit out of place, even in swamps, because of the sheer size of it. Is you don't expect bugs to be that big. So I am very curious to see what areas on which maps this creature is going to be in. So taking a look at the domesticated description. These overgrown earwigs are just what you need to level up your tribe's aerial defenses. And here's a tip. If you crush up the right Arthropleura, you'll get an enzyme that makes Rhinoognathor glue as tech disruptive as Dinopithecus dung. Plus this bug can glue itself to creatures or cargo and carry things around your base. So this is the new resource that I mentioned earlier. In fact, technically two resources, the enzyme and the Rhyneognathor glue. And you know, the thing I find pretty cool about this is that the enzyme comes from Arthropleuras and not the Rhyneognathor itself, which gives new reasons to hunt down Arthropleuras, which I really like that sort of thing because it's things like this that give you renewed reasons to go after more older, more forgotten creatures. This does sound like it's not a guaranteed resource drop, so it's probably going to be a rare drop, similar to things like the Titan of Boa Venom and stuff like that. So it will probably require regular farming inside caves. And the Rhyneognathor can glue itself to creatures and cargo and carry them around. Now this is the bit I was interested in seeing from the original suggestion, which described the creature as the Sky Giga capable of picking up a Rex, which I honestly was sure that they wouldn't do that. Now of course this doesn't give any indication to the size of creatures that it can glue to itself. But as with all pickup abilities, it's based on drag weight. So whatever the drag weight will be for the Rhyneognathor 
that will determine what creatures it can pick up. And I doubt it will be Rex capable. I think this is going to have a drag weight less than that of a Rex. Now this bit is the taming method and possibly the breeding method too, all rolled up into one. I'm not sure, but they definitely took this idea from the original suggestion. It looks like you don't tame adults. So like wyverns and rock drakes, you basically tame them by breeding a baby. So this is actually another new resource, the male pheromone. It says, the males have a pheromone that invites egg laying females to use them as hosts. Harvest that pheromone and you can mark any creature for the female to lay her eggs on. The host then incubates a new generation of larvae that can reap its best traits in the process. So you'll need to go hunting male rhinoognathers to collect this pheromone and then select a creature to be used as a sacrificial host. Now it's not clear whether you can mark this pheromone on wild creatures or just your own tames. I do believe the original suggestion stated both and that the creature would be killed as a result, but it's possible that this is only relating to tames. But it says the host then incubates a new generation of larvae that can reap its best traits in the process. I'm not sure what they mean by that. It's taking the sacrificial creatures best traits. Does that mean different creatures can get different results? Possibly it just means better taming effectiveness and overall best stats. Because as we know, generally with that sort of taming, the bigger the creature, the, the bigger the drag weight of the creature, the better the results, the better taming effectiveness. Or is it taking stats from the creature itself? I honestly don't know exactly what they mean by that, but it will be interesting to find out of what they actually mean. I don't know what you guys think, but let me know. And then lastly, of course, if you end up getting eggs laid on the wrong tame, you can save it before the process completes by cryoing it. So I've got to say, this creature does sound really interesting. I wasn't quite sure to begin with, with it being a massive bug, but it does sound really interesting but I've just got the feeling that they aren't going to be easy to fight. And I'm pretty sure that the taming method will not be straightforward. I bet it will be frustrating. These new types of taming methods are always far from being simple. We also don't know yet whether these creatures will actually be breedable once tamed. Hopefully they are. I don't see why they wouldn't add that ability, but of course we'll find out in June. So yes, overall, I'm pretty happy with the description of it so far. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like it too? Or is it not really your cup of tea? And if you don't want to miss out on any of the latest dark news, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.